Have you ever wanted to make music in Ableton, but you just didn't know where to start? If you've ever wanted to learn anything about Ableton, then hopefully this is the video for you. Hello everyone, my name is Inspirasper and welcome to Ableton for Beginners, a video where I really hope I can portray how to use Ableton for those of you who are a little unfamiliar with the software. This video is meant to be geared towards those of you who really want to make music but just don't know how. In order to make music, you need to have some sort of DAW or digital audio workstation. An example of one of these DAWs is Ableton, which is the topic of this video. Now I know from experience that trying out new DAWs can be a bit intimidating, especially if you're not entirely certain what you're doing. So the goal of this video will be to simply explain what it is you're looking at right now, what is on my screen. Because if you're new to this, what you're looking at can be a bit confusing, and it can be really hard to get anywhere in your music production career if you don't know what you're doing. It's almost like asking someone who's never seen a car before to drive you around town. They'll jump in the vehicle and they'll look around and they'll see all these bells and whistles, but they won't know what they do. And that really can't help them do anything. So if that makes any sense, I'm gonna try and explain everything you see here on screen. So I am in Ableton. What I did was I just started a new set. And this is what Ableton looks like by default when you open it. So first things first, there are a few windows and or sections that can be addressed. In the center here, this middle rectangle, you'll notice a bunch of columns. Two of them say MIDI, two of them say audio. We'll get into what that means a little bit later, but for now, think of this middle section as where all of your music will happen. This is where you will make all of your sounds and mix everything together. On the left here, this left section is your library. This is where you store all of your sounds, your instruments, samples, things of that nature. You can think of this as, if this middle rectangle was your canvas for painting a picture, then this left section could be considered as your palette, where you store all the materials you will use to create your final product. Another section we have is this top row of buttons. I'll go through and explain what they all do in just a second, but these more or less alter the pace of your song, your tempo, things of that nature. So to start things off, I'm gonna highly recommend you go to the bottom left of Ableton. If this arrow isn't already clicked, then you should click it. This window down here will explain everything you're hovering over. So if I were to hover over some random button right now, for example, this one, this is an arm session recording. And I know that because of that bottom left rectangle, whatever your mouse is hovering over, if you have this window open, it will explain, which can be helpful if you don't necessarily know everything in Ableton. Even I don't know everything that is in Ableton. And so this can help me out greatly if I ever come across something new to me. So next, what I'm gonna do is hit the tab button on my computer, and that changes the layout or my view in Ableton. Now I can currently see all of my tracks horizontally as different layers. By the way, in case anyone was curious, the point of using this window mode with the vertical columns that you can see right now is more or less used for live sessions where you could add in different loops of samples that would just repeat over and over and over, and then you could record things live on it, maybe make a live beat. But if you really want to make music, produce music, mix and master, all that stuff, then I'm gonna hit the tab button and go into this view. And this is the view you will most likely use the most. So as I mentioned earlier, you start off with two MIDI and two audio tracks. The MIDI track is where you will draw in all of your notes that your instruments can then play. Think of, for example, Guitar Hero. As the notes come down, hit the bottom, you play that note. In a sense, that's what you will do here in the MIDI track. Also, you have audio tracks. This is where you can drag and drop pure audio samples. So your .mp3s, your .wavs. These are just raw audio samples. And down here at the bottom, there will be three more tracks that will always be here unless you delete them. There'll be a reverb, delay, and then the master. You will always have a master track. You can send things to your A and B tracks to add in reverbs and delay, and your master track encompasses everything you create. If you ever wanna add or delete MIDI tracks, you can either hover over your track and click their names and press the delete button, you could highlight over their names, right click and hit delete. And to add them, you can right click in this open space and either insert an audio track or insert a MIDI track. If you'd like, you could rename your tracks by either right clicking and saying rename, or you could highlight over track and hit command R. If you're on Windows, I believe the equivalent is control R. If you'd like, you could change the default color of your tracks by right clicking and then changing a color. 
Over here to the right of your tracks, you can have a bunch. You have a bunch of options for input and output. This is typically used for if you have an external MIDI controller or perhaps an external instrument hooked up to your computer. Say, for example, you have a guitar that you have a way to plug into your computer. You could then set your audio track to receive input from that guitar and then perform it live. And that's how you get input from an external source. So that's what all this stuff to the right of your tracks do. The yellow rectangles to the right of your tracks indicate on off. Yellow means on, gray means off. You can change it simply by clicking this button. This S button to the right of that means solo. If you click that, only that track will play and no other tracks will play, which is very nice if you want to isolate a particular sound or instrument. If you ever want to add audio effects, EQ, add reverb, stuff like that, if you want to tweak a particular sound. And you can go back by simply clicking that button again. The button to the right of the solo button is your recording arm, which designates that particular track for recording. I mentioned earlier how you could hook up external controllers or instruments to your computer and clicking this button to arm that track for recording tells Ableton that the input you're receiving is going to go into that track. Otherwise, if you have nothing armed for recording and you have an instrument plugged in, Ableton won't be sure what track to add that data into, that MIDI or audio input. So if you ever want to record something live, make sure that track is armed. Next, let's go through the top of Ableton, through this bar at the top, and explain what everything does. Let's start here in the middle. You'll see there's an arrow, some numbers, and a bunch of symbols. These symbols are probably what you think they are. This triangle facing to the right is a play button. Clicking the play button plays your music. Makes sense, right? You could also press your space bar to play from wherever this orange bar is located. So let's say if I were to click over here and press play, I clearly don't have any music or anything to listen to, but you notice that the bar now starts where this number nine is. If I move to say 17 and press the space bar, I start playing from there. That'll make more sense once we actually have an arrangement laid out in Ableton. But for now, I just thought it would be worth noting that you can move your starting position when you press play. This square is the stop button. If you're playing and you click the stop button, it stops playing, makes sense. This circle is recording. I mentioned earlier how if you have a recording arm activated, you can receive input from an external source. Clicking this recording button is actually what starts recording. This is what engages the recording mode. So whenever you're ready to record, you can click this button. This plus sign is what's called overdub. Uh, it's a little more advanced than you would necessarily need starting off, but in a sense, it allows you to play over what you've already made if you were to loop through an already recorded section of your song without replacing what you've made. Again, if I continue this series and maybe explain Ableton a bit, little bit further, maybe then I'll go into more depth on what it does. But for now, you can just disregard it. Over here on the top left of Ableton, you'll see a number. By default, it's it'll be set at 120. Now this is your BPM, which stands for beats per minute. This designates how fast or slow your song will be. A lower number means a slower song. A higher number means a faster song. As the name implies, this is how many beats will occur in a minute for your song. Typical BPMs lie anywhere from around about 80 up until 150 or 160. But I can think of a few songs that are outside of that range, so don't just take my word for it. You can play around with the number yourself and see how, it, how you feel about it. But to change this BPM, you could either click within this box and and drag up or down or alternatively you can just click in this box and then type in a number this box to the left of your BPM is called tap this lets you set a manual BPM by tapping on this box to a certain rhythm say for example say for example I had a rhythm in mind and I wanted to set my BPM according to that rhythm in order to do that I could click this tap button to that beat for example just as a rough example. And it turns out the tempo, the beat that I was tapping to is about 106 BPM. And then once you type that in, you could probably clean it up, make it a nice even 106, just because the extra 0.12 was not really necessary. And that's how you could get a rough estimate on a BPM that you have in mind. These two buttons to the right of your BPM designate a temporary BPM down or up. So it's a, a quick shift either downwards or upwards. This is usually if you're recording live with someone and you wanna, and maybe you got out of sync with them and you wanna catch back up you either are too fast or too slow, you can nudge your BPM slightly accordingly to kind of have a temporary fix. To the right of that, we have our time signature. And again, just like our BPM, you can change these numbers by either clicking in their box and dragging up or down, or you could click in the box 
and type in a certain number. Now, if you don't know what time signature is, I'm not necessarily one to explain it in full depth. I'm not a huge music theory guy, but you can look it up online to get a better understanding. To put it simply, my understanding is it's how many beats happen in a particular bar, which will then affect the tempo of your music. To the right of that, we have our metronome, which you can either activate or deactivate depending on what you like. So to activate it, we simply click it. And like most things in Ableton, when it's activated, it turns yellow. And so now that means my metronome is on. And if I were to play my music right now, you can hear the metronome to go with it. This is particularly helpful if you're playing live and you want to get in sync with your BPM. So if I were to press play right now with my metronome activated, you can hear that my metronome is playing along. Over here, this segment of rectangles is used for looping. I'll be completely honest, I haven't really touched this section much, but I know it's, I know it's like, let's say you had a particular MIDI clip, and I'll teach you guys how to draw this in later, don't worry, there's no need to worry about following along. But from my understanding is, you can activate these buttons, and they either allow you to enter a loop, continue a loop, or exit a loop. And then these knobs and sliders over here designate how long the loop occurs for. If you really want to know more about that, I'm sure there are videos out there that you could search, you could look up how to loop in Ableton or something like that, but that's not necessarily the focus of this video. This video is more so on how to, how to tackle music production. If there's a high enough demand for it, maybe I can explain it further. But anyways, going to this top right section of Ableton, this first button over here that looks like a pencil allows you to draw in notes. You could click this button, and then when you're within a MIDI clip, so let's say I have a MIDI clip, then I currently have a pencil, and if I were to deactivate this pencil, I'm now a selector tool. A quick way to switch between this pencil and the selector is to press your B button. B as in boy. Pressing B allows me to turn into a pencil. Pressing B, again, switches from my pencil to my selector tool, which I can then use to highlight notes. And I'll go over that in just a minute. For now, I'm just explaining what each button does, remember. This next button that's currently yellow is the piano key, is what allows you to play your particular armed instrument on your computer. Let's say I wanted to put in some random instrument on this particular MIDI track. If I were to then, if I have this button pressed, and I were to press some buttons on my computer keyboard, then you can hear that I'm actually playing the instruments. However, now if I were to turn that option off, and if I were to press the buttons on my keyboard, it doesn't do anything. So that's just a nice way if you don't have an, an external keyboard, but you want to quickly and easily listen to some notes or chords or something of that matter. You can activate that and use your computer keyboard. These next two buttons, labeled key and MIDI, allows you to assign a particular button to a particular thing in Ableton. Say for example, I have, I click this key button. Now I'm entering the mapping mode. I could then press any of these orange buttons. Let's say for simplicity's sake, I wanna press play. I just, I simply click the button I want and then I press some button on my computer keyboard because remember, I'm using key. So I click the play button and let's say I want, I don't know, Q for example, to press play. So I press this play button, press Q on my keyboard, and now I'm gonna click the key button again to get out of this mode. Now, if I were to press Q on my keyboard, I play. Basically, it's a quick way to map something to a button in Ableton. And you can do the same for MIDI. This is used for external controllers. For example, a launch pad or a launch key. You could press this button, choose any button in Ableton, and then press the according button on your controller. And then anytime you press that button, you'll activate the button in Ableton, if that makes any sense. Finally, the box to the right of that is your CPU load meter. Currently, it's at 0%, which makes sense because I'm not running anything. This designates how much power your CPU is using to make your music. And generally, once you have, you know, 50 layers of MIDI and audio tracks going at once, all with different, with dozens of audio effects stacked on it, that can put a heavy load on your CPU. And so you'll notice that as you make music and once you're playing it, usually the CPU load will get pretty high. That's it for the basic walkthrough of the interface of Ableton. Hopefully, more or less, you have an idea on what everything does. If not, at least you have an introduction to what everything does so you can actually get somewhere to learn for yourself. So I actually started explaining how to, I started explaining a little bit on how to drag an instrument onto your MIDI track and how to draw in notes in your MIDI clip and all that stuff. But I'm realizing now that I'm taking a little bit more time than I would have liked because to be fair, I'm, I'm going a little, I'm being a little more intricate than I probably should, but I want everything to soak in for all of the, for all of you out there who are new. So I'm gonna leave this video as it is. So what we covered in this this video was simply the interface, all the buttons and what they do, because if you think about it, that's really the essential thing to pick up on. That's one of the most important things to know. So if I get a good enough response from this video, then I can jump into, then I can further explain how to actually make the music 
you know, how to draw everything in, how to make your MIDI clips, different instruments, stuff like that. Because this video wasn't meant to be a how to make music, it was more so what everything in Ableton does, if that makes any sense. So now that we're acquainted with what everything does, then we can jump into how to use it. Hopefully that makes sense. Hopefully you can appreciate my thought about that. So yeah, I think that'll wrap up this video. Thank you for watching. If you want to see another part to learn more about Ableton, let me know and I'll see you all in the next video.